Hello, this is a screencast on how to make a data-only change with Liquibase. The University of Arizona has a change management method for databases using Liquibase. We're going to skip the first few steps here and go straight to updating uh, JIRA issue number for that update. This is a list of the files that we're using at the University of Arizona. I want to quick go over what they're for. The data, constraints, and install at XML are strictly for new schemas. They build the schema from the ground up, but the update.xml refers to XML that will modify an existing schema. schema. I am now going to create kit958.xml and include that within my update.xml file. We name the update files by kit issue number. Kit is a Jira project for our application. Say for example, if I wanted to make an update under kit 958, my update file would be kit 958. By naming the file by our issue number, we are coupling our issue tracking with our update. We name the update files by kit issue number. Kit is a Jira project for our application. Say for example, if I wanted to make an update under kit 958, my update file would be named kit 958. By naming the file by our issue number, we are coupling our issue tracking with our update. Now that we've got our change set, I'm going to start to fill the contents of our update. I'm going to add a comment first for it to say what we're doing. We want to add a new Kim type for patisserie. And then we're going to create a new role called an eclair baker. So I'll comment on that. we need to decide if we want a stored procedure to add data or not. Uh, we have a template depending on which. I need to create a stored procedure because we have data that's dependent on each other. I'm going to create a type and then a role for that type. So let's go and open up that template. It's a template so I'm going to copy and paste the contents into my update script or update XML. I also want the rollback section. I'll show you what that is for in a bit. Now that we have the contents pasted, I'm going to remove some of the boilerplate that I don't need. Now there is our base update change log. Now let me explain this update directive here. What we have is in the SQL directive, we have split statements equals false. This means that we really have just one combined statement and we don't want it to separate based on the semicolons. Also, we set end delimiter to be an empty string so that we don't have to have the typical slash at the end that some databases don't support. 